On May 11, 2021, Honeywell International, a 115-year-old corporation historically associated with aerospace and manufacturing, moved its stock listing from the New York Stock Exchange to NASDAQ. The shift was aligned with the company's ongoing transformation into a 21st century tech innovator, focused on breakthroughs in quantum computing, industrial software, renewable energy, material science, and more. And although digital transformation for any company comes with new challenges, CEO and Chairman Darius Adamchak says the marriage of hardware and industrial software is a natural evolution, and that the combination of engineering know-how and the power of data will lead to efficiency and agility for customers globally. I sat down with Mr. Adamchak to walk through the digital path ahead for Honeywell, as well as his views on self-disruption, transformation, and how he sees success. Hi, Darius. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Darius, four years ago, you became the CEO of one of the largest industrial companies in the world. What was the catalyst for digital transformation and the new track you put the company on, which is increasingly focused on new technologies, software, and sustainability? That was an interesting time four years ago because I had a very, very successful predecessor in, in Dave Cody, and there was a lot of momentum and inertia to just keep running the same playbook. It's worked very, very well for a number of years, and we, a lot of investors said, well, just keep doing what uh, Dave was doing. And I knew that we had to pivot in order to become and move from being a good company to a great company. You have to do something different. You have to continue to evolve and become something different in the future. And, and for us, we've always been a technology company. That's not new. We've had more software engineers on our staff than any other type of engineers. And because the one common fiber throughout all of our Honeywell businesses is the fact that we're a control systems company, we're connected to just about everything and anything in a given system. So making that transformation to moving from a more of a controls company to making more of a software digital company was a natural evolution for us. And it's also important to note that this evolution isn't just external, which is evident in our Forge offerings, our Honeywell Connected Enterprise, but it's also internal and we're becoming a much more contemporary company internally as well as externally. I'm so glad you made that point. We see that companies that really marry the internal and the external transformation are, are most successful. And I know you've, you've invested in common technology platforms. I know that you're integrating a lot of the technologies you bring to market in your own headquarters in, in North Carolina. So uh, the, I think that's a really important point to make. Now, Honeywell isn't the first industrial company to go through a transformation like this. Why do you think Honeywell will be successful? And what are some of the risks that you have to manage along the way? It certainly is a very challenging journey. And although we're dreaming big and have very big aspirational goals for the business, it also has to evolve and meet short-term financial goals. So as an example, our software, our connected enterprise is already both accretive in terms of our growth rates, margin rates to our current business. And although we're investing substantially in it, it also has to pay for itself. So, you know, we don't have this build it and they come kind of a dream. You know, we, we're ground in reality and we're ground in what we can do. And, and the faster we grow, the more credibility we gain, the more confidence I gain in investing even more in that business. And part of that evidence was our recent acquisition of Sparta Systems, which is a very nice adjacent piece to our business. Any transformation requires a foundation or a vision of, of the future. And you coined the company's motto to be the future is what we make it. What is the future and what is the vision that builds confidence in technology investments? Well, the future is, is what we make it. It's, it's sort of what we innovate, where we go, where we want to move the company. And it's really related to the fact that we have such a strong innovation technology mindset within the company that we can really be the leaders in defining the technology future, at least for the industrial world, because that's the way we think of ourselves, which is a technology leader 
providing solutions for the industrial world. And we're going to continue to innovate and, and read in some of these areas that are so critical for the world, whether it's sustainability, energy usability, transition away from a carbon intensive energy future. You know, those are some of these areas that we're highly interested in. Another one being the future of aviation where we're playing in. We want to be part of creating that future and remaking it for future generations. Does that largely develop organically or do you see acquisitions accelerating the pace or getting you there faster? I think any good strategy has to be an organic strategy. Because if you're counting on acquisitions to make the reality of tomorrow happen, to, you're counting on that to make your strategy happen, I think that can be very short-sighted. Because a lot of things can happen to acquisitions. They may not, no longer be available. They may not be actionable. They may be at a value point which is not reachable and does not make sense for Honeywell or, or our shareholders. However, I will say that we have acquisitions which can be additive and catalyze further growth. So I would say it's primarily an organic strategy which can be accelerated through thoughtful acquisitions as we grow. And you were able to really move quickly even during the pandemic that disrupted some of your businesses and acquired, you know, two really interesting additions to the Forge platform and in Sign and, and Sparta last year. Last year was really an inspirational year for me because I was amazed in terms of what my colleagues at Honeywell can do in, in while operating in a crisis. I mean, they've innovated better. They've taken on a whole new speed of innovation. The kinds of innovations that it would take us years to do took us weeks or months to do. And then towards the end of last year, we had an opportunity to acquire a couple of extraordinarily interesting bolt-on businesses to forge, that being Psy, which offers a whole new set of capabilities around our connected buildings offering. And then Sparta Systems, which dramatically strengthens our position in the life sciences sector, particularly in the quality management. So, you know, we're both opportunistic, but also we innovated and the organic part of our strategy probably involved in 2020 more than any other year that I've been CEO. And you've invested in several cutting edge technologies. Quantum computing is, is a great example. Uh, clearly could be game changing, but may take several years to pay off. Honeywell brings a unique perspective because this technology will solve some of the biggest problems for the exact industries and, and customers that you sell to. Well, quantum is particularly well fit to solve problems that traditional and current computers can't solve. So examples being molecule research, uh, root optimization, cryptography, those kinds of areas that frankly can't be resolved by current day computers, only quantum computers will be able to solve those. And by the way, those are the needs of some of our current customers. So it actually doesn't move away far from our current customer set because many of the customers that we're going to be working with and using our quantum technology are our current customer. You know, logistics research and route optimization would be one, which obviously that is highly applicable to, let's say, airlines, let's say to freight and logistics companies. Well, that's within our current customer set. So we're going to further strengthen our relationships by now offering them quantum solutions to solve some of their day tomorrow, the day after kind of problems. I would argue that over the next decade, there are two megatrends that will impact the market. The first is digital transformation that we've touched on. The second is sustainability. How does your internal technology innovation and portfolio interact with your efforts to drive efficiency, uh, energy savings, and sustainability? Well, first of all, I would agree with you. Those are the two mega trends, and we're participating in both of them. And I would say where we are in that journey is very, very different. In sustainability, in some areas, we're much further along. Our technologies are much more developed. As, and just a couple of very specific examples. Ecofining, I mean, that is some of our invention. And frankly, for a couple of decades now, we've had some of those green diesel 
green gasoline, all of these kinds of technologies we've already had and had available. And frankly, we just didn't have a lot of interest. Now all of a sudden that's changed and we're having much more interest. But we're involved in so many technologies to make the planet much more sustainable for the future. Specifically, carbon capture, efficient and economically viable energy storage, plastics recyclability. I mentioned we're involved in one of the world's biggest carbon capture projects right now. Eco-finding I talked about before. So there are so many solutions that we have right now that we're talking to customers about. So I would actually argue that our sustainability technology set is much more advanced today than even some of our digital solutions. And you recently announced Honeywell's carbon pledge and stated an ambitious goal of, of neutrality by 2035. But in addition to your own internal targets, your portfolio, like you said, is, is really about helping other companies reach their sustainability goals. Could you talk a little bit more about your overall ESG and sustainability philosophy as it relates to Honeywell and your customers? Sure. I mean, one of the things that uh, we take great pride in is more than a half our R&D dollars are spent on ESG type of solutions, which is incredible. And that number is going to continue to go up. But, but just maybe back to the, the carbon neutrality pledge, I, I wanted it to be a little bit different because it's easy to say it, it's a little bit harder to do it. And we have a track record over the last decade and a half we reduced our own carbon footprint by over 90%. We've done it through numerous projects over the years. I set another goal that we've, that's kind of a near-term goal that we've got to reduce it by another 10% within the next three years and then get to zero by 2035. So it's the past, the near future, and the long term. The trends we're talking about today will take a decade or more to play out, meaning that the pandemic will just be a small part of, of the journey. But as a CEO and a student of history, what are some of the lessons that you'll carry with you as we move beyond the pandemic? The first one is when a crisis is upon you, you have to act quickly and decisively, but not just looking internally at ourselves, because there's obviously a lot of our processes that we had to change internally, literally in a matter of days to be able to operate. And then we further evolved and said, well, what's the world going to need as it comes back from this pandemic? And we developed something called our Healthy Solutions. So it's a suite of technologies for buildings, for aircraft, for industrial plants, for the healthcare segments, which will help the world evolve and come out of this crisis. So we try to be two steps ahead in terms of when, where the world was at that time to actually have us be, have a much more successful exit out of this crisis and continue to generate goodwill, but also have a very successful financial outcome for our shareholders. That's very well said. Now, we started this conversation uh, with the decision four years ago to change course. Of course, the, the lower risk path would be to stay the course, but you took risk and you've seen success. As CEO, what else do you need to accomplish in order to complete this transformation? Well, we, as I mentioned, we still have a long way to go into transformation. I, I think software has to become an even bigger part of our DNA, both internally and externally. We're building that muscle set every single year, but I would say we're far from done. What we learned through the COVID crisis is how quickly we can innovate in a crisis because we had to. And I want to retain some of that capability and shorten our innovation cycle times by more than 50%. Because frankly, in COVID era, we probably innovated by 80% shorter cycle times than we normally do. And maybe that's not totally realistic, but we certainly can cut them in half. And then last one, which I think is so, so important for all of us, and it's reflected in some of our breakthrough technologies, is to continue to be creative and anticipate well ahead of time what our customers, 
what the world will need, but not when it needs it, but several years before it needs it. And that's what we're trying to do. That's how we think about running Honeywell and really kind of thinking having that short-term delivery today, but also having the right solutions and technologies a decade from now. And the only way you can effectively do that is if you think ahead. And that's what we try to do every day. What a great place to wrap up. I hope you'll invite me down sometime to see your new headquarters in North Carolina. I'm actually looking over because I can literally see it from where I am today. But it's, um, it's going to have our latest and greatest technology, both from connected buildings as well as sustainable technology. So it will have our fuel cell batteries in it. It will have solar power and solar energy, all our great latest and greatest security, touchless, healthy buildings. You're going to get an index of how clean the air is at a given point in time. It's, it's going to be great. That was great, Darius. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Well, thank you. Thank you for the great questions and thank you for the interview. <laughs>